Hey everybody, this is Greg from Safe Ride for Kids, where our mission is to help you make every arrival a safe arrival for you and every member of your family, including your unborn children. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, the difference between rear facing and forward facing and that and how that includes the Ride Safer Travel Vest uh, when we apply the principles talked about in the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's Child Passenger Safety Technician Certification Program. In there, as instructors, we talk about there being five principles that every restraint system uses or applies, whether that is a seat belt or a kid's car seat. And those principles are one, First and foremost, keep occupants inside the vehicle. Uh, a person's probability of being fatally injured increased multiples of times once they leave the passenger compartment. So the number one objective of every restraint system for adults or children is to keep them inside the vehicle. Number two is to contact the strongest points of the body. For you and I as adults, that's our shoulders, our hips, and our, our, our leg area. Um, and then for children, they don't have the developed pelvis bone, so we try to spread that contact out over more by using a five-point harness type system. Or, in the case of a seatbelt positioning device, helping that adult seatbelt fit a child better. The third principle is to spread the crash force out over as much of the body surface area as possible. We can all imagine that very focused energy um, can cause injury. Think about uh, a magnifying glass. When we all stand in the sun, we're not getting burned, but as soon as we focus that energy into a single point, that's when we can get burned very quickly, very instantly. So the principle of the restraint system is to spread that crash force out over more of the body or as much as the body as possible. The next principle is to ride down or spread the crash time out over more time. I mean, we're already talking fractions of a second anyway. The most crashes uh, is about one-tenth of one second for the entire crash to uh, take place. So with ride down, we're talking about the harnesses in the car seats uh, giving and stretching. We're talking about the seat belts giving and stretching. We're talking about all of the safety features into the vehicle, the airbags and the seat belt uh, itself and the cushions of the seat. All of these things are intended to absorb energy and ride down or spread that duration out over more time. And then lastly, uh, the principle is to protect the head, neck, and spinal column, those parts of the human body that are really hard to repair once they're damaged. So let's talk about rear-facing child restraints. As you can imagine, forward impacts are one of the, are the most common type of impact. Another little factoid is that most crashes, like 97% of crashes, are at 30 miles an hour or less. So when we're talking about frontal crashes, we're talking about the child being rear-facing for the at least the first two years. Now they're making child restraints that go much higher rear-facing weight limits and that's a good thing because if you think about that forward impact, we have the child's head, neck, and back all being supported. The seat is not installed by the way. <laughs> all being uh, supported by the child restraint in that forward uh, impact, that most common type of car crash. Once we flip that child forward facing, now the principle is that we're using the harness to restrain the child's body as that forward impact occurs. Ideally, we're going to be using the vehicle's tether anchor system. The, seat belt, the child restraint will be properly installed uh, according to uh, the best practice recommendations of the seat and the vehicle. But from a crash dynamics perspective, we're looking at the harness contacting the shoulders and the hips with the crotch buckle in the middle. That's the spreading the crash force out over as much of the body as possible. So the downside of forward facing, or the reason that it's one step away from optimum protection, which is rear facing, is that now we're restraining the child's body, but there's nothing uh, about the child restraint system that's necessarily restraining their head or their neck. 
in that forward impact. And that's why the rear facing recommendation is lo is as long as is to keep your child rear facing as long as possible, because we want to give the bones in the neck as much time as possible to get as strong as possible so that it's able and it's the best chances of the neck being able to restrain the head and protect the spinal column in that forward impact when that child goes forward facing. Now, if we think about uh, the next stage after the five point harness is the seat belt positioning stage. That's the stage where most commonly where people are familiar with the booster seat, but that's also where the ride safer travel vest comes into play as a seat belt positioning device. And at that point, what we're doing is we're, we're positioning the vehicles, the adults seat belt system onto a child. Now a booster works by lifting that child up so that the adult seatbelt will accommodate and fit them better. The Ride Safer Vest does essentially the same thing, but by bringing the seatbelt down to the child and locking it in place on the shoulder and the hips with the clips that are part of the vest. The other component of the vest that's, that we really like is that the front panels of the vest are designed to absorb and dissipate the crash energy of the vehicle seatbelt doing the work of restraining the child. And so that's applying that other principle of spreading the crash force out over as much of the body as possible. And with the clip on the shoulder of the Ride Safer vest, we're able to keep that shoulder belt properly positioned on the child, even if they move around some, that seatbelt's going to track with them. So that's kind of what we're talking about is rear facing is optimum protection, forward facing with a harness, a booster seat, the ride safer vest, the mechanics of the head, neck, and spinal column are virtually the same in that forward impact because it's the head and the neck that are unrestrained and are moving forward. And then once we move beyond the ride safer vest into just the vehicle seatbelt system, part of that process is uh, determining when your child can move to that step with the five step test, which is covered in one of our other videos. So thanks for joining us today. Um, before we go, I do want to mention that at Safe Ride for Kids, we have the Tummy Shield, which introduces seatbelt safety for the pregnant mother. And that's important because this vehicle seatbelt system was never intended for pregnant moms. The Tummy Shield does a great job of applying these same principles of keeping the occupant in the car, restraining, uh, contacting the strongest points of the body, spreading the crash forces out, and doing everything that we can to uh, help the mother ride down that crash without impacting uh, the unborn child. So thanks for joining us today. Remember that safety is all about putting the odds in your favor. Have a great day.